Right mate, today I'm gonna go through how to use the MyFitnessPal app. You can use the free version, which is what I use, or you can pay a little subscription fee, I'm not too sure how much it costs, for the premium version, which does add a couple of cool features. However, you don't need it. So anyway, once you've downloaded the MyFitnessPal app, you wanna open that up. And obviously what you're gonna to need to do in the first instance is just create an account. So you can log in via through like your Google account or you can just create an account or even through Facebook as well, I believe. Anyway, so once you're all logged in, you will come to a screen like this, the dashboard. There's a few more tabs at the bottom. So we've got log food, news feed, you won't really use that. Uh, plans, you won't really use that either. And also more. So this tab here, more with the three dots, is the first tab we're going to explore. So the first thing I want you to do is click into my profile. And if you click on edit profile, there will just be a few basic details for you to fill out. So it's just, you know, how tall you are, your gender, date of birth, basic stuff. So once you've filled that all out, you're gonna click back and back again. And the next thing, I want you to go into your goals. So once we click into that, you'll see on my screen right here, I've got my current weight and my goal weight. So for me at the moment, I'm trying to push body weight up. So I'm trying to gain body weight at around 0.5 pounds per week. So I've set that to that. And then underneath that, you'll see it says a tab which says nutrition goals. So we're gonna click onto the calories, carbs, protein, and fat goals. And you'll see there is my nutritional target. So calories, 4,000 on a training day that is. Um, so you can't do training day and non-training day goals on MyFitnessPal unless you pay for the premium feature. So I personally don't pay, it's up to you whether you do. If you've got the spare cash, then feel free. But what we can do, we click into the calories, obviously enter the calories that you're gonna consume for the day. And then for the carbs, protein, and fats, what we can do on the free version is actually just go by the percentage. So we can't do the exact grams, but we can get there or thereabouts with the percentages. So for me, roughly, that is about right. But as long as we know how many carbs, um, fats, protein we are consuming, that will come up in the a different tab, which I'll show you in a minute. So as long as you can get that, those figures there or thereabouts, that's the main thing. So once you've set that, you will go back. And in the other tab, you'll see there's a fitness goals with your workouts and stuff like that. And what I want you to do is just completely ignore that because what we're gonna do in this app is just purely tracking your food intake and none of your expenditure. So if we go back again, you will see it has a tab called steps. And what I want you to do is click on don't track steps because if we do have that tracking your steps, what will happen is it will use that data of the steps and that will kind of get put in against your food going in. So if you've burnt loads of calories from your steps, it's gonna tell you to eat more food and we don't want that. So we will be tracking steps, but on another app and we're just using MyFitnessPal purely for the food going in. So once you've set that to don't track steps, what I want you to do is have a look on the reminders tab. So if you click on there, you can get some push notifications to remind you to track your breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, um, not snacks actually, but track your food throughout the day and also your weigh-ins. So if you feel like you need that to keep you accountable, then it could be worth doing. But to be honest, if you're serious about progressing, you're not gonna be forgetting anyway. So it's up to you whether you do that or not. I personally don't, but you know, it's your call. Once that's all set up, what I want you to do is go on your dashboard and that will then show your calories, and if we click on that, we've got calories, nutrients, uh, and macros. So you can keep a, an eye on what's going on. So we'll go back, and what we're gonna do is show you how to actually log some food. A few years ago, you used to be able to scan barcodes and it wouldn't cost you anything. Now, I think if you've made an account after like September 2022, you have to pay to scan barcodes to um, input that into the, the database. So uh, I'll just show you now, if I try and do that on this account, which is a new one, it will come up with this. So yeah, we won't be able to do that, but what we can do, we can search for the food on the database. So 
take these porridge oats for example uh, these are from Audi so if I just type in here every day if I can spell every day essentials porridge oats press search there and then that will come up with some results so what we need to do to match this onto my fitness pal to make it accurate is look at the serving size so on this packet here it's telling me 40 per serve 40 grams is 166 calories so if i have a look here we'll click on one there and you'll see there's a, there's a serving size of 100 grams and number of servings so serving size of 100 grams what we can do we can change that to one gram okay and then we'll click on the number of servings we put 40 that's come up with the wrong amount of calories so that's not the one we need so if we go back and let's just praise god we find one that is right okay this one is the right one so 40 grams look number of servings one 165 calories this says 166 so we're there or thereabouts that's you don't have to worry about one calorie so once that's there like i said you can change the serving size and say if we wanted 100 grams change the number of servings to 100 press the tick in the top right hand corner we go back and if you look on the bre the breakfast tab you will see that has logged the food so you could do that with every food if you're fortunate enough to have made a count before so you can just scan the barcode it is a lot quicker but um, that's uh, a workaround that you're probably going to have to do if you've not already made an account so you do that for all your foods and what you can do to save time in putting foods if we go on the more tab again and we go on to my meals recipes and foods what we can do is click on the meals and create a meal and you can name the meal let's call it protein oats like that done and what we can do is add items to this meal so i can add my oats and click the tick there i can put these oats down now and then let's uh, search for some whey protein. Obviously, you'd find the whey protein that you have. Let's just choose this one, whatever protein that is, uh, like that. And then we'd go back. And obviously, if you was having protein oats, I'd hope you're having more than just oats and whey, maybe some blueberries, whatever you want to put in there. But say we've done all of that, all your ingredients are in there, we just press save in the top right hand corner. And there you go, there is your meal. So if we go back now, um, go back onto the log food, we'll delete what I've inputted for the oats. And if we click here, add food, we go into my meals, and there is my protein oats meal. So instead of every time going into it and manually putting in each item, you can then um, just put your meal in. So it does save a lot of time because at the end of the day, we don't wanna be spending half our life just inputting food. So another thing to mention actually, let's um, just put that, meal back in there uh, add food my meals there we go so once you've inputted that you'll see you have your calories at the top there so it says 552 at the moment so if we click into that that will um, show us three more tabs calories nutrients and macros so if we've got nutrients it will bring up the nutrients we have had so i'm talking about like your, your micronutrients like your vitamin a vitamin c etc so that's cool to know, but if we click on the macros bit, which is the most important thing for us to know, that will give us our macro split breakdown. So at the moment, from just those oats and whey protein, I've we've consumed 80 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fats, and 38 grams of protein. So as you input your food throughout the day, and you click into that, that button there with the food, that will tell us exactly how much we've ate for the whole day. And at the end of the day, you should be hitting your calorie and protein goal with your carbs and fats. As long as you're there or thereabouts, I don't need to stress over that too much, but the calorie goal and the protein goal is the most important. But that's pretty much all you need to know in terms of you know getting a basic understanding of how to work around this app. So you will probably discover other little things that might make your life a little bit easier. But like I said, they're the main things. As for the paid version, again, it's just gonna make things maybe a little bit easier, but it's definitely not a necessity. But if you get stuck with anything, let me know. You'll be fine. You'll work this out pretty quickly. It's not too bad, but um, yeah. Please do get in touch if you get stuck. And yeah, good luck.